Hi, we're now going to look at what is meant by a file format before looking at some specific examples in the next video. And also in this video, we'll talk about compression and some issues which can be linked to compression like large file sizes. So when I go to save this presentation, I'm given a lot of options, a lot of file extensions, which are all of different file formats. So usually for almost every single digital media product we could think of, there will be a range of file formats which you could choose. Often there'll be a default. So for PowerPoint, which is what I'm making this in, the default is a PowerPoint presentation, which has got the extension .pptx, but also it gives about, I don't know, 30 other examples, which it could also be saved as, each of which is saved in a slightly different way, because the file format is specifying how the computer is actually going to store the contents of the file. Fundamentally, all electronic files, amazingly, are just stored as zeros and ones, and it needs to, the computer needs to know how to interpret those zeros and ones, which is defined by the file format. And the file format will determine exactly how you are going to interact with the saved file. So a .pptx allows me to do animations and so on, whereas a PDF would just be a static slide deck. But also a file format will affect other properties like the file size and also the file quality. So by file, file size, I mean how much space is it gonna take up on some memory? Quality is harder to define because it's not a discrete number, but for media like audio, images, video, which we'll look at in the next video, clearly there is a perceived quality. Is it in HD? Is it in 4K? And this can also be derived from the file format we choose to save it in. And oftentimes it is a choice. As designers, we are allowed to save it in whatever format we think is most suitable. Sometimes it will be defined by your organization. If everyone in your organization is using one file format, you save it in another file format might mean your work is not compatible with the rest of the work in the company. And related to this, we can talk about naming conventions. So a naming convention is a way, a consistent way of naming a file across an organization. So we should ideally in pre-production at an early stage, have an agreed convention for how, how everyone is gonna save their files to ensure that consistency. So often, the sorts of raw files, maybe coming from a camera, like is in this case, are not the most readable and understandable file names. Of course, we can choose how we name our files, but equally, one person could be naming it in one way, another person could be naming it in a different way, and ideally we want an, an agreed convention which everyone is gonna follow. Otherwise, things could get really confusing. It's important to also agree some convention for version control. Version control refers to how we are keeping track of edits. And usually any edit will result in a new file with a, a version number in it. So you might just append v1, v2 on the end of a file. It shows you that that file is the newest version and has some changes. Not having a clear way of tracking versions, especially between people on a team, makes it really hard to know which file is the latest and also which file was the original. Another important aspect of version control is having these files saved separately, so having the edits as separate files. Otherwise, if you're just overwriting the original file, you lose the ability to then restore to it in case you're not happy with one of your edits. In the next video, we'll talk about limitations of actual specific file formats, but speaking more generally about issues which are related to this, which you do need to be aware of. And importantly, there is usually a trade-off between your file size and quality. A trade-off meaning if we increase one, we have to decrease the other. So if we want a very high quality file, we need to store more data, and so the file size gets bigger. If we want a small file, we may need to sacrifice some quality in order to cut down on the actual data being stored. And the side of this coin you want to prioritize depends on your purpose. So the size of a file you're gonna download from the internet is better to be smaller, have a smaller file size, so it'll be quick to download. If you're building a website, you don't, want, you don't necessarily want a massive high quality file if it's gonna take a long time to download. However, if you're doing something which requires a very physically large image, so it's like a billboard or a large poster or something like that, you need to make sure it's high enough quality, which usually means it's got a high enough resolution, otherwise it'll become too pixelated. The resolution is the detail an image holds, and it's usually expressed using pixels, the pixel being the smallest identifiable aspect of an image, so a small square, really a block of color. And you can see on the left here where we have just a, a one pixel and as we steadily increase the pixels the image gets higher quality it becomes less pixelated less blocky because we are adding more pixels and it's becoming high quality through increasing the resolution now during production if you are taking a photo or filming a video you want to do it in as high resolution as possible even if the file size is quite large because you can't increase resolution after you've 
creative a file or not easily and not with high enough quality but you can cut down on the file size using compression. So compression is just reducing a file size making it smaller so it takes up less space and some file formats have compression built in otherwise you can pass a file through a compression program which will do this for you. There are two ways which compression programs can work the first of which is lossy compression so in this type of compression the program will selectively delete some of the data. So what it's doing is, is looking for what data it can remove without having a large effect. And this can save quite a lot of memory space. It can massively reduce your file size because you're actually deleting some of the data, but it's going to reduce quality. Because we are sacrificing some quality here, usually lossy is applied only to things like images, audio, video, because the quality is not always the most important thing or is not essential in all, in all cases. Like a, a text document or a presentation, you can't just cut out some of the text because it will then make no sense. But a video could be slightly less high quality and still be okay. So for types of files which are for text documents or for spreadsheets or so on where you can't really afford to lose any of your data, you can use lossless compression. And all this is doing is not deleting anything, it just rearranges the data to make it be stored more efficiently. So it kind of shuffles the data around to make it be stored in a, in a better way, which uses, uses less space. So you don't have any quality loss with lossless compression, but because you're not actually cutting any data, it doesn't always lead to a large reduction in storage space. Lossy is generally much more effective, but like I say, can't be used on certain files without causing massive issues. So here is not a brilliant example of lossy versus lossless because probably on your screen it's not a huge difference. But on the left here we have lossless and the image quality is quite good here. For lossy it's, a, it's not bad but it's not brilliant. The colors are less vivid, the outlines are less clear. But in terms of the file storage space, for lossless we have 3.4 megabytes whereas lossy is a much smaller file, 1.6 megabytes. And so this lossy image would take less time to download on a website and so you may value that quicker download time more than the slightly decreased quality.